Recently, the topic of FSD coming to China has been very popular. Many people are directly testing it with real cars to see if FSD will adapt to the local conditions in China. Moreover, many people are spending 64,000 yuan to purchase it on the same day. So today, we won't waste any time and have brought a Model X equipped with the 64,000 yuan FSD option to Guangzhou for a real-world test. Okay, now that we're inside the car, let me show you that we have already upgraded to the latest version. Here, under the Autopilot Self-Driving Assistance function, there is an option for FSD Intelligent Driving Assistance. Only with this option can you truly use the FSD function. Below you can see that there are three driving styles to choose from, relaxed, standard, and assertive. Since we are conducting a real-world FSD test in Guangzhou, I think we should add some local culture to the test. As everyone knows, the evening rush hour in Guangzhou is really terrifying, with many electric bikes and very complex road conditions. We will see how this high-difficulty challenge goes. Today, we will mainly look at various road conditions that people are concerned about, such as roundabouts, very narrow old city roads, restricted areas, U-turns, etc., to see how Tesla's FSD compares to the current mainstream self-driving levels in China. Since we are challenging the evening rush hour, let's show you the current time, which is 5.42 p.m. At 6 p.m., we will leave this area and head to the main road to see if the FSD challenge can succeed during the evening rush hour. Here we go, getting ready to turn left. But you will notice that the navigation position is actually wrong 250 meters ahead. You see, we are in the third lane. The navigation information does not match the actual information, which is quite awkward. We are in the third lane and it hasn't turned yet, so I might have to manually signal a left turn. This performance is not particularly good. Now I will manually signal a left turn. Let's see if it can handle it. It seems okay. Let's see if it can make the turn because the guiding line hasn't changed. I only signaled, but it hasn't turned yet. Will it turn? Yes, it can. Good. So we've discovered the first issue. The route and the display don't match. The actual route. The actual route is different, so it raises a problem. It won't follow the navigation route to initiate the lane change. Let's take a look. Pass the first exit, then at the next exit, make a turn. Our direction around the roundabout is relatively straightforward. Now turning around, but there's a car ahead signaling right. Where is it going? Oh, it's okay. This is a two out of four roundabout, meaning four exits, and it takes the second one. It passed through smoothly. Let's take a look at this. Ah, another region level difficulty roundabout. Right, there's a car next to us. It seems like it's trying to compete with us. Right. But maybe he just saw that our car might be more expensive, so he didn't crash into us aggressively. So that's good. It's good that today we drove. It's a Model X. Oh, and let's slap a plaid badge on the back while we're at it. Make it look even more expensive. With lights like these, it definitely won't misread them because it can't even see them. It doesn't understand tree-shaped or bar-shaped signals. So everyone, get a feel for this. Guangzhou rush hour commuting. Look at all the e-bikes next to us. They're not even in the second lane anymore. They're in the third lane with us. We've already moved to the third lane, not the second lane. Wow, you... Look here. Wow, a bunch of them, but we can still move. We can drive out of the roundabout and enter Zhongshan. I feel it's quite good. In places with many electric bikes, we didn't just step on the gas and then brake suddenly. At least it didn't get stuck here. It's still quite smooth. It can still move. Wow, look at this. And maybe it's also because... One reason might be that those electric scooters probably think our car looks relatively more expensive, so they might be a bit more cautious. Wow, you can see there's a problem ahead. Actually, I want to see if once all the pedestrians have crossed, 
Since there are no traffic lights, does it know it should go? Right, you see now it has turned into a green light, but there are still people passing by. Look, our car hasn't moved, the steering wheel hasn't moved, and the horn behind us hasn't stopped. People are still walking, quite smart. But there's a car squeezing in from the right. Squeezing in, squeezing in. It's okay, it's okay. We made a maneuver to avoid it, entering the roundabout. You see, like this one, you... From a low angle, the light can still be recognized. From my left side, the system can see it. Yes, 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 from my left side, this angle can be seen. Wow, but honestly, it's too difficult here, just looking at it now. Actually, Tesla's system tends to be a bit more conservative when making decisions. It might be similar to other brands we've encountered before. Some brands might seize on a small detail and proceed, but for now, it seems Tesla it might be more willing to wait in more scenarios, waiting until it's safe to proceed. Right now, it's a bit awkward. We're not sure if it knows we're waiting for the traffic light or if it's not moving because there are too many cars. I'm not quite sure if this car has recognized this situation because, you see, it's very strange. Look, there's a red light here and a green light there. Does it know which one we should follow? Haha. <laughs> Actually, because on the right side, I see on the screen, it seems to be looking at the green light. You see, the SR interface shows the green light, but on the left side, it could also see it earlier. Maybe the car blocked it, but does it really know which light to follow? This is something we don't know. You see now on the right side, the traffic light is green. That's why we say the road conditions in China are particularly complex. It might not be as complicated overseas, but these traffic lights are still... Got it, let's go. This car, we should turn left, this car. Well, this one turned around. So, yes. point. Not bad, he can still directly. On such a narrow road around the island, with cars approaching from behind, it can still switch to the left lane. This car is relatively large in size. Well, I saw a comment saying to compare it again in a year because it's not fair now and there's no data. We understand this situation, but this is the first time it's entering the Chinese market. Right. We at least need to show everyone how it performs in its initial state. Look, it actually ran a red light. Yes, because it saw the red light, but it didn't know which light we were looking at. This is the first violation. The second violation was crossing the line, and now it's running a red light, which is six points and a 200 yuan fine. Look at this. Wow, it's quite strong in terms of passing ability. It just went through directly, avoiding that pile of traffic. Now, this is a real green light. No problem here. Actually, its performance in the roundabout is better than many brands. At least being able to move is a key issue. Whether it moves well is another matter. Oh, oh, it's the same, then immediately keep left. Here it crossed the line again, another violation, it crossed the straight line in its route choice. Normally it should pass the roundabout first and then move to the right lane. So that was the third violation. You see, next to it, there's a pedestrian crossing and multiple lane choices. First, yield. But it seems like there's no zebra crossing displayed on the interface. It doesn't show when it can start moving or if someone is passing, or maybe yield first. Okay, after passing, I estimate that after these two pedestrians pass, it might consider starting. The steering wheel is moving, but it hasn't moved yet. It's a bit awkward. Oh, it's moving now. It seems that even Tesla does this kind of steering. Enter the roundabout and take the second exit onto Zhongshan Road. Please proceed. Right. The steering wheel will be misaligned. The Tesla in front will also have a misaligned steering wheel. Here you can see that its speed has clearly decreased. Yes, it will. Based on the road conditions, he... It's relatively conservative. Look, our current speed is only 15. Normally, the speed limit recognized by the car for this road is 40. We're driving at 20 now, so we could actually increase the speed a little bit. It's also okay. I think, but of course, safety should come first, actually. So, if you consider efficiency, 
I think in this road condition, it might reach 20 or 25. But, right, at least the Model X we're experiencing now is driving in this road condition. It's relatively slow. Right now our speed is around 18. Look, if there are no cars here, will it speed up? Ah, right, now there are no cars on either side. Actually, it's still about the same. Now it's getting a bit slower. Yes, you see, the image shows it stopped. There's a car inside, so it stopped. But it's not very sure how this car will move. Hey, why did it stop? Wow. This is going to slow, yes. Mainly, you can see that he... There are vehicles going the wrong way ahead, so it stopped. Personally, I think that Tesla's approach of reducing speed on relatively narrow roads is a valid method. This way, there isn't a constant process of accelerating and decelerating, which might make the ride more comfortable for passengers. Additionally, it gives the vehicle more time to handle unexpected situations. The space might be larger. Hmm, let's take a look here. Actually, I think the reason he stopped is because there are many cars behind us, including these electric bikes. He's getting closer. Should he move or not? Oh, there's a pedestrian riding a bike through, and another one. He's not moving, so should we go? Let's see if we can avoid this cyclist. It's quite awkward. The two of us are just looking at each other because he's judging this road. It might be a bit narrower, but to be honest, I think at least the performance of the Model X on this road is not particularly outstanding. It's just very conservative. Relatively conservative and possibly even below average. Let me answer briefly. Previously, we tested many systems on this road, including Harmony OS, right? Including possibly Lie Auto and Xpeng, right? Their performance might seem a bit better than Tesla's. At least in terms of traffic efficiency, they are somewhat higher, with fewer braking actions, to be honest. Driving this car on this kind of road, I think we should put a sticker on the back saying, we are testing FSD. Otherwise, the cars behind us will keep flashing their lights at us. So awkward, this thing. Yeah, look at this, this traffic situation. There are these electric bikes going the wrong way, right? And there's illegal parking, right? It makes the road very narrow. And look at this again. As we approach our destination, it seems like we know there's a car behind us. We've been giving way to others all along. You see, because we're driving relatively slowly, is that why he moved a bit to the right? Really, after the pedestrian passes, you see we let three cars go ahead, and then we signal to the left. Here it comes. Now you see, the overall feeling isn't as good as before, right? It's just that it feels like there are more people now. Yes, he will pause. Look, now he's not moving. He's going very slowly. And now the right wheel should be on the white line. Yes, but it's still okay in the bike lane. He stopped again. There's a car in front and he knows it, so he quickly signaled left. Let's see if it works. The cars behind are honking like crazy. Yes, indeed. A bunch of cars behind are honking like crazy. Honking. Yeah, but maybe they considered that our car is a Model X, so maybe they... There's no braking. They're coming over to scold us. So, should we take over? Look, it's basically not moving. It's basically not passing. Look over here, see if we can pass. Look, the car behind is already honking like crazy. Hurry. We did it, but actually the system can pass. So if anyone has doubts about whether it can pass, it can. However, the performance is not very good. All right, we have arrived. Click on the third icon. It's the Dongshan department store. We still need to adjust the navigation. Let's drive off first because it's too slow here due to various reasons. Actually, Tesla is already behind us. It's a mess. The road ahead is really difficult to navigate. We need to turn left, but the left side is completely blocked. This looks like a protected turn, but in reality, it's almost like an unprotected turn. The cars next to us don't care if it's a red light or a green light. They just go however they want. And look, 
the left side has started moving, and those cars will keep coming at us. So, can we even make this turn? It's really too... chaotic. To be honest, if I were driving myself at this intersection, I would just follow the car on the left and go in. This way I wouldn't stop in the middle of the road because there's enough space on the left. Now let's see, after the cars on the left pass, the white car in front can move. Once it moves, then it's our turn. Yes, it's still blocking us right now. We will try to turn, but the other side has started moving again. It's completely blocking our way now, I guess. This won't work because the opposite lane has already started moving. We'll try to turn the steering wheel to the left. You see now it's moving on its own, turning left, turning left. Actually, there's enough space. I can see there's enough space. Uh, actually, there should be enough space. Okay, then how about I? Let me try giving it a bit of throttle manually for a human machine co-driving test. Let's see how Tesla's system performs. Here I'm pressing the accelerator, pressing the accelerator. Hey, it actually can. It works. I press the accelerator again. Keep pressing, keep pressing. Okay, I release the accelerator and it takes over again. I don't consider this a stop. It's more of a human-machine collaboration. I'm providing some assistance, some help. Yes, I'm giving it some assistance. Help me out here. Actually, I think this point is quite similar to many new intelligent self-driving systems in China. Let's give it a try. Now everyone, pay attention. Up ahead, there's an electric bike making a U-turn. Oh, it turned the steering wheel all the way. Not bad, not bad. Oh, this is actually quite good. After making the U-turn, it immediately turned on the right signal. No problem there. It needs to merge into the internal road. Let's see if it can enter the internal road of the roundabout. I think this U-turn is quite solid. It's good. Now right? It'll be on the right rear. The electric bike is coming. Let's see if he will yield. He should. He is. There is a crosswalk, and there will be electric bikes coming from both sides. In this scenario, on one hand, you could say it's safe, but I think to some extent it might actually be quite silly, because if there are continuous bikes, we might not be able to get through at all. Look, just like now, even a little bit of an electric bike can get stuck here. Now we've become mobile. Obstacle, there's no way around it because this electric bike is really persistent. You can see from the right rear camera angle when it will move. Still not moving. No car, no car. He really knows that he doesn't have a car anymore. It's a bit shaky, but it should be fine. Let's see if we can enter the internal roads of the park. We have a license plate, so we should be able to get in. Open the gate. Hey, open the gate. Okay, it's open. You see, with direct FSD push, we can enter the internal roads of the park. At least, even if we can't park directly, the internal roads are accessible. Our navigation point is the company of the car professor. Normally, if it can enter the internal roads, it should be able to take me to the company entrance. I hope it can take me to the company entrance. Look, we need to turn left here, and there will be some visual markers because there's a flower bed on the left. You see, there's an electric bike coming, and it breaks. Slow down, let it pass. Okay, no cars, let's start again. Hmm, keep to the left and go straight. This part is still manageable. Up ahead, the final challenge is a roundabout. Turn left in 150 meters. Although it's not shown here, it is actually a roundabout with a fountain in the center. As we approach the destination, let's see if he can make the final turn. The last challenge is a left turn. He turned on the left signal. The biggest challenge of internal roads is that the information about them might not be open. So rich, huh? Yeah, it's possible. Oh, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Oh, turn right. It really can take us to the company entrance. What do you all think of the FSC's performance? Let's discuss in the comment section.